panel and publisher of the Arc Animal um, Tarot and Oracle deck. <laughs> I can never get that angle right. Um, and also the publisher of uh, whatismyspiritanimal.com and buildingbeautifulsouls.com, a place where lots and lots and lots of you guys come for your metaphysical and spiritual information every month, for which I am grateful. And I hope you're enjoying the sites and um, that they're helping you. So I was called upon to do this video because a jillion D of you guys each month ask me what the difference between a spirit totem and power animal is. And I want you to know right off the bat, in theory, there is no difference. It just depends on what culture that you're studying and their relationship to animals and their mythology, um, you know, what, how they interface with animals, animal spirits, that nature of thing, what their spirituality is. In some cultures, it's called a spirit animal. In some cultures, it's called a totem animal. In all some cultures, they call it a power animal. And the idea of those energies or that medicine, that magic, are pretty much the same. Um, they vary a bit culture to culture, but when you're starting to try to, um, you know, work with those energies to divine the messages that are coming to you, interpret the messages, uh, the omens, or you are trying to use the energy of animals, um, the animal allies for healing purposes, like shamanic healing, energy healing, that nature of thing, purely metaphysical healing. Um, it, it can get really confusing when you're trying to figure out who you are. It can get confusing. And so the animals downloaded into me a method for um, categorizing a spirit animal and working with its energies, a totem animal and working with its energies, a power animal and working with its energies. So I'm going to explain that here now and give you a few maybe methods for helping to find your way to knowing more about those um, subjects, spirit, totem, and power animals. And uh, there is an article on my site, the link is below, but this video will be a little more in-depth than that article is. So if you can, you know, stand my yak, 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 yak for just a little bit, I hope you will find this helpful, and here we go. Okay, so just so you guys know, um, one of the reasons that I started whatismyspiritanimal.com was because when I went out into the world and I was looking for the symbolism and the meaning of uh, all kinds of animals, it was the work that I'd always done. And um, once I read Ted Andrews' book, like the grandfather, you know, the great father of bringing the subject of spirit animals and totem animals into the, you know, into the mainstream world, I was like hungry for more. Well, Ted's original body of work and um, started, I want to say like in the 70s, and he stayed with that original body of work, um, Animal Speak and then Nature Speak, those books of his, um, and Nature Speak is about plants and trees and herbs and that kind of thing, and Animal Speak is about, you know, of course, all animals. Uh, it, it, I wanted more. It was a great, it's, and it's still a great foundation. I still look to Ted when I'm like, ah, I can't find this. What is it? What is it? What is it? I, I still look to Ted, to his cards, to all of his books. You know, Ted, you're on the other side looking out for all of the animals and the rest of us. I know you are, and we miss you terribly, and uh, gone way too soon. But um, I just, you know, I knew that there had to be something more expansive, and yet there wasn't. So I, you know, I was given a vision to start the website, to dig deeper into animal symbolism and mythology. And when I say dig deep, one of my favorite things is to get a nasty gram in my Facebook Messenger, on my Facebook page, or an email, you're appropriating the Native American culture. Really? Like the Native American culture is the only culture through the world that has a relationship with animals or animal symbolism or animal meanings or, you know, animal mythology and used them in, okay, look y'all, when Bernadette says she researches something, okay, get a load of this. First of all, this book probably weighs 15 pounds. 
It's a Joseph Campbell book. For those of you not familiar with the king, the father of mythology, that's Joseph Campbell. This book is, oh, for some reason I usually have a tape measure here, but it is ginormous. And it's got like, I don't know, 400 pages in it or something. And the book has got to be 18 inches tall and 12 inches wide. Oh, and this is just the first volume. And then this volume, part two, it's not quite as thick and not quite as big, but it's a part two, right? The Way of Animal Powers. And there are tribes in here that I certainly had never heard of before. And the most amazing stories that they have gleaned from hieroglyphics in caves, from excavations um, in later years, you know, written oral, you know, oral traditions that have been passed down. And my library is full of any book that I could find about any kind of culture, indigenous culture. You know, I don't care if it was some high society lady in Chicago in 1922 before the Great Fire or whenever the Great Fire was. If you've got something to say about the world of animal spirits, I'd like to hear it. I'd like to know about it because I learn each time and my relationship with the animals grows each time. So when the um, animal allies downloaded this process, this method to me, they did so in such a way that I would be able to use my teaching background to then take that out into the world and help you all get closer to your own animal allies. Or if you're trying to interpret a message for somebody else or a dream or um, a sighting or you're doing a reading for somebody and you're like, why do I keep seeing a white buffalo show up? And you find out, <clears throat> pardon me, that that person um, has a thing for white buffaloes or a white buffalo came to them in a dream and they've just been too kind of embarrassed or scared to tell anybody and find out what it means. You know, bottom line is, this is a method that I have watched work over and over and over again in the most powerful, tremendous ways with my own clients when teaching classes. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So, um, pardon me, you guys, I have a little bit of dry throat today. I'm going to grab some water. Oh, and I splashed it on my glasses. Very nice. So, um, so let's start out with a spirit animal, what, it, what, what a spirit animal is. So what is a spirit animal? What is a spirit animal? What is a spirit animal? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to start with that and I'm going to harp on it because in the method that was given to me, a spirit animal is the animal or animals that appear to you in your hour of need. Even when you don't know you need it, even if you haven't specifically prayed for it, asked for it, done affirmations, um, you know, just sent out the request, you know, consciously, sometimes your soul can cry out for what, you know, what you need. Like you might have a dream about snakes. It's, it's like the third most common dream that humanity has. Humanity worldwide, like the third most common dream maybe the second most common dream, I'd have to look that up again, but is dreams about snakes. Okay, that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. And it, you know, interpreting a dream about snakes can be slippery. <laughs> I love puns. It's part of my charm. So, um, you know, I have a lot of clients that will call me and go, can you interpret this? No, I don't do dream interpretation. I refer them to Dana Winters, who's a very fine dream interpreter, very fine dream interpreter. Um, with Lucky Frog Tarot, if you guys, you can look up Lucky Frog Tarot on Facebook or on her website, luckyfrogtarot.com. But if you need a dream interpreted, call Dana. So, um, you know, if they've seen an animal, if they've had an animal appear in a meditation, now if they've done a lucid dream, and set an intention before they went into that kind of dream state where you're half dreaming and half awake. Yeah, I'll talk to them about that. Um, and certainly, you know, if you've had animals come to you in a meditation or, you know, you may call and go, oh my gosh, this is making me crazy. All I keep seeing are like meerkats. Everywhere I turn, there's a meerkat. 
Okay. For me, about eight weeks ago, <clears throat> pardon me, you guys, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, it was Sasquatch, Yeti, um, the abominable, well, not the, abom not the abominable snowman, but um, what is it, Sasquatch, Yeti, and um, I'm losing my mind. It's late in the day. Sorry. You'll think of the other name. Anyway, oh, my gosh, everywhere I turned was this animal, it, man, mythological creature. And I just thought it was the most hilarious thing because <laughs> a friend of mine and I were driving um, to uh, an animal sanctuary about an hour or so from our house. And I'm talking lack a gack a gack about something. And she grabs my arm and she goes, look. And I looked up like that, the way her head was directed. And there's this huge billboard that reads Sasquatch Museum you know, only two hours ahead and wherever, wherever, Georgia. Well, I almost had to pull my car over on the interstate because I started laughing so hard. Now look, everybody's got something that they're into. Everybody's got <laughs> something that they're into. But I want to know the person that woke up one morning and said, I have to start a Yeti museum. I've got to start a Sasquatch museum. I have to do this. My soul is being called. Because this thing boasts that it's like, I don't know, 4,000 square feet or something? Maybe more? Can you fill a space that big with information about Sasquatch and Yeti? Can, can you do that? <laughs> so <clears throat> that was Pandora's box. It had been opened right there. And I don't know if maybe my energy was just calling it in because I laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed about it. Um, not that I don't believe in them. I absolutely do. I believe in the Loch Ness Monster. I truly, truly, truly do. It still is funny, y'all. Funny is funny, okay? I spent too many years doing stand-up comedy. Funny is funny. So I just, you know, I just put an article up about, um, about them. Why do I keep having in my mind Abominable Snowman? That's not it. Sasquatch Yeti and I'll think of the name. Anyway, it's got like three names. So, um... However you're seeing this animal, and it's trying to get to you, chances are very good it's your spirit animal. And what that means is this. That animal has got a message, um, something that it wants you to know that will be helpful to you in some way. Now, that way may just be to just know that its energy and medicine is available to you, is available to support you, to inspire you, to, you know, do some kind of healing for you. Bigfoot, Lord, why couldn't I think of the name Bigfoot? For crying out loud, I had to sneak a peek on my own site while I'm doing this video to you guys. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. Okay, so let's talk about a spirit animal for just a minute because... Sometimes a spirit animal can be something that we were not prepared for or did not intend. So what, when I lead med spirit animal meditations for people to find their spirit animal or animals, because more than one can show up, I always preface it by saying, look, we've got to set a specific intention. If you just randomly say, what is my spirit animal to the animal kingdom, they don't really know what you mean. What does that mean? What are you trying to get insight for? What are you trying to energetically heal? What are you trying to, you know, be supported for? What is that? And, and if you're specific, they can send a specific animal or animals that will answer that question. So the other thing that I tell them is, please don't be alarmed. Try to stay under in your meditative state if you get an ill or injured animal that appears to you. It can be unsettling, it can be uncomfortable, it can be, it can evoke all kinds of emotion, it can be a little scary, um, but there's a reason for that and it doesn't happen a lot, but it's very profound and powerful when it does. You know, an instance of that might be that you've asked about, you know, uh, a romantic relationship that you're having 
And in particular, you've asked why your partner can't, won't, doesn't, or why you can't, won't, don't, whatever. And you might have a dog that shows up that crawls to you on its belly and acts like it's terrified of you. What does that mean? You might have a dog show up that has mange. You might have a rabbit show up with a bite mark in it. You, I mean, there could be all kinds of things that happen. And then really it's up to, okay, well, how did that make you feel? Can you remember the colors? Can you remember the temperature? Do you happen to know the time of day? Do you happen to know the season? You know, there are all kinds of other things to blend into what these kinds of things can mean. And, you know, you can get the kind of kookiest spirit animals or they might be kooky to you if you're reading for someone else or working on a healing with someone else. Um, I had a guy one time that called me off the What Is My Spirit Animal site and he wanted a reading. And, you know, I asked him, did he want to know what spirit animal or animals were coming to me for him when his reading started? And he thought he was just getting a psychic reading or a shamanic reading and he went, sure, okay. And I said, well, I said, I, I've got the cricket card here. Now, before you go a cricket, because so many people, you know, when a spirit animal is coming to save the day, they want like an eagle, a wolf, an elephant, a tiger, a lion, you know, some power animal. All the animals are powerful. You ever seen what a pile of ants can do? They may be microscopic, but you get a whole bunch of them together and they literally move the world. Like, you know, 10 foot piles and, of sand and invade your house and your picnics and, you know, they're very compelling. You get one mosquito in a room, just one, and it, you, can, <laughs> you can watch that mosquito herd the people all around the room because no one wants to get bit by a mosquito. So <clears throat> um, he just laughed and he said, listen, I'm very open, go ahead. And I said, well, <clears throat> on this card, I'm really drawn to the stillness. Like when I, when I am asking this animal spirit guide to talk to me, I almost don't want to talk to you. I want to get very still and I just want to look around just like this and decide where I'm going to jump next, but I want to take my time and I want to be very stoic in my face. I just want to watch. This guy busted out laughing. He goes, okay, I know what it means. And I'm like, okay, what does it mean? He said, I'm a professional poker player. <laughs> I just started laughing because this guy's lot in life, what he does for a profession is sit perfectly still and emotionless. So nobody can, none of the other players can read his expression from what hand he's been dealt. And he's got to decide when it's time to jump. How far does he jump? Does he not jump? <clears throat> you know, how long does he sit still? All of these kinds of things. And that's a lot of discipline, right? That's a lot of discipline. And if a little insect and their little pea insect brains can do it, you can do it. So we had a good laugh over that and we talked more about cricket and then went on with his reading. Um, greatest guy ever, just beautiful wife, lovely family. Can't say enough great about this guy. Um, just a joy to have in my life and in my business. And so, um, or do business with him, you know, help him in any way that I can. And so in the most unexpected way, this guy got the perfect spirit animal for him and he was considering a very large move at that time and ultimately decided it was time to sit still a little while longer. And thank goodness he did because it was the difference of tens of thousands of dollars and a lot of hassle. So when you're calling out for your spirit animal, set a specific intention of what you need help with, what you want clarity on, and you may have to go one step at a time, but be open-minded to whatever animal comes to you. Um, it may not be the animal you thought would show up. You may be like, that doesn't resonate with me at all, but I'm here to tell you, spirit never, ever, ever sends the wrong animal, never. We may have the wrong interpretation. And to avoid that, I really suggest you, <laughs> ah, 
I really suggest you watch two videos. You watch the I really screwed up with my spirit animal video. I'll drop the link below and the coronavirus animal video because it will teach you about unexpected animals in unexpected places that may seem like the most redonkulous animal ever. And you're like, I don't think so. And yet is so beyond, 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 beyond perfect and powerful. And then you'll uh, learn, that's in the, coronav the coronavirus animal video. And then in the I really screwed up with my spirit animal video, I talk about not seeing an obvious message that was there, duh. And I also talk about misinterpreting a message that seemed like on the surface of it, like who's ever gonna get a message like this again as long as they live? I, I, I mean, really, th that, wow, just wow. And yet it was wrong <laughs> on some, on some levels it was wrong. And, you know, it cost me time, it cost me money, it was aggravating, ugh, oy. But in retrospect, it was worth its weight in gold, maybe even platinum, maybe even priceless. But if you can avoid misinterpreting what your spirit animal is trying to tell you, better for you. And that's, you know, that's my job. That's what I wanna help you guys with. So. Under, understand that the animal spirit world will hear your soul cry out even when you don't. If I had a nickel, the proverbial if I had a nickel or it was so close, if it was a snake, it would have bit you. T you know, nickel for every one of those times that a client would come in to me, especially for divorce, like divorce, big thing. They'd come in and I'd go, oh, I'm sorry. You're either just on the tail end of a divorce or you're getting a divorce or you're you, no, 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 we're fine. That's not what I'm being told by spirit. And then I'll go, have you seen a lot of owls lately? Y yes. Okay, well, you know, what's trying to happen is the owls are trying to get you to have the courage to see in the darkness. What does that even mean? And then I go through the whole owl symbolism and how, you know, owls can see in the dark. They, you know, they can't be heard flying. They can't be recorded flying. It's a, having to do with a, you know, how their feathers are set up. Anyway, without going into it, the bottom line is the world of spirit animals knew months, sometimes a few years before these people did. They just didn't want to face it. You know, you've got a marriage of, you know, even five or 10 years and you've got children involved and you're part of each other's families and, you know, that's not so easy to make the decision to bring an end to, no matter what the reason is, that's hard, that's tough. And most of my clients are women, so that's tougher. And, um, you know, women, women hem and haw longer than men do. We vacillate longer than men do. And it takes us time to process the emotions longer, I think, than, than men as a general rule. As a general rule, so guys, please don't write me hate mail. You know I love you. I do, all of you, every one of you. Uh, but still, it takes women a little bit longer. So anyway, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's really important. Now, I tell people to journal, <laughs> but I don't journal. I don't have the time and it's not really comfortable for me. It's just really not my thing. But if you do journal or you keep notes in your phone or just some other place that you can write down things and date it, then you might find yourself when you're like, God, I keep seeing snow owls. Why am I seeing snow owls? Or everywhere I turn, I see a, something about a roach, repetitive, you know, roach motel commercials, repetitive ads on Facebook. Um, which of course can have to do with, you know, did, were you looking on Amazon or someplace else for like, you know, the best roach bait or this or that or the other, that's going to track you till the end of time, just so you know. But that doesn't mean, even if you want to take the advertising out of it, somebody brings up that they found a roach, you know, wherever, or, you know, they saw it, they, it came crawling across their desk, across their shoe, 
you might find, you know, you saw a children's book about roaches. S somebody somehow in some way, you, you roach or roaches are presented to you and you are like, this is the weirdest thing ever and you dismiss it and then you find out a year down the road, oh, that's what they were trying to tell me. So it's really, um, it's much easier, it's much quicker to get the messages that they're trying to send you if you are aware of repetitive appearances or even appearances in your dream state of whatever animal or animals, you write it down, you start with looking up their symbolism, definitely look up their um, behavior, their habits, you might find a clue in there somewhere. Um, you know, just, just start your investigation and open up for those messages to be made more clear and more uh, more precise as they come to you. Okay, so I hope that explains what a spirit animal is, a little bit how to work with their energy, um, a little bit how to find them and interpret the messages when they come in. Now we'll move on to totem animals. So in this system that the animal allies downloaded to me, a totem animal is who you are at your core now. Whether you believe in astrology or the zodiac or not, it's out there, and I believe in it wholeheartedly. Now, I get messages every now and then that the Native American zodiac is a big crockahooey, and the Native Americans didn't invent it. I'm still investigating that to find out who invented the Native American zodiac, but I happen to know that lots and lots and lots of people out there are looking for information about it and so doesn't that in some way make it true because from a shamanic perspective the descriptions of these um and in the book uh, you know it said that um here i'll show you guys the book love this book so this one is shamanic astrology by lucy harner harmer it said that between she and um Sun Bear and Waboon, Wabun, Waboon, um, of which I'm, I'm connected to on Facebook. Uh, what is my memory drama today? Melise, Maurice, Melise Waboon is her name, that they invented it, and it's Krakahui. But what's not a Krakahui is bringing in all the Native American moon cycles and the foods and the colors and the directions and everything that are associated to it. And so what if they just expanded on a body of work already set forth by the Native American shaman and whatever? And again, I'm not appropriating anything shaman or not indigenous just to the Native American culture. Trust me, I know. Just go out and look at all the cultures that have shaman or medicine men or, you know, magic men or whatever. It's all the same, maybe different words, but all the same. Um, what if they just expanded on that body of work? I'm okay with that. It's, you know, 40 years old, 40 years old, 70, well, 35 years old at this point. Um, and if that many people are benefiting from it and love it, okay, yay. And then, of course, in the um, Mayan astrology, Mayan zodiac, which is, you know, coming from, for sure, for sure, from that culture that I know of. Um, and then, of course, the Western zodiac and the Chinese zodiac. All of those are animal-based, with the exception of, uh, in the Western Zodiac, of course, there's Libra, the sign of scales, and Gemini, uh, the sign of twins in Virgo, which is, you know, um, a maiden. But I have often said that humans can be spirit animals, and I have often seen it proven, because after all, at our core, we are classified as animals. Okay, so why can't we be a spirit animal? I believe we can. Now, does that make it harder for the scales of justice? Yes, and I'm sorry for that, but in the Chinese Zodiac, the Mayan Zodiac, the Native American Zodiac, the Celtic Zodiac, they're all animal-based. So really when you're looking for who you are, why you do the things you do, why you don't do the things that you don't, why you act and react certain ways, it's really helpful to start looking at your Zodiac signs in all of the different Zodiacal systems and start you know, kind of comparing them or keeping a list of them. And that way you can begin to have a better understanding of yourself. Now, that said, 
I believe we live many lifetimes. In this lifetime, I'm a triple Scorpio, and I mean like I'm the Chinese Zodiac, the Native American Zodiac, the Mayan Zodiac, and the um, Celtic Zodiac version of a Scorpio, which is a snake. And there are many astrologers who really do feel like a snake should have been the Western Zodiac symbol for Scorpio, and it should have been named something else. And I understand it's about the constellations in the sky and this and that, but it's a snake is also <clears throat> part of the three levels of Scorpio. So I'm Scorpio through and through and through and through and through and snake through and through and through and through. However, I have always been obsessed with bears. Not I like them, not I really love them, obsessed. And for the people that know me best, especially people that knew me when I was younger and not nearly as centered as I am now, they, they often had to endure the Scorpio, for which I apologize. I, you know, forgive me, please. Um, these days, not so much, but uh, usually when I can't lay my hands on chocolate, I get really ugly. But uh, I just, I consider my true totem animal the bear. And for other people, they consider their true totem animal something different than their zodiac sign, but I would encourage you that potentially that animal is your power animal. And I'll get to that in a second, but when it comes to totem animals, I believe it's a sacred contract that you make with that animal energy prior to coming in each lifetime so that you are fascinated that animal speaks to you, you know, if there were a hundred animals that were in front of you that needed saving, of course you would want to save every one of them, but you might lunge for a zebra first or a monkey first or a, a, a goldfish. I don't know, whatever your animal is. And I, you know, it could be anything. It could be, you know, going back to the cockroach. It could be a cockroach. It could be an ant. It could be, you know, God knows we all want to save the bumblebees or all the bees, so um, just know that you can learn an awful lot about yourself by really, again, you know, taking the time to get to know the characteristics and traits and personality of your zodiac sign and in, in all the different systems, and then really considering, you know, what your what your favorite animal is, what your animal that calls to you is. Now, I love cats and dogs. They're the most common ones chosen usually when people are like, you know, you're like, well, let's talk about this. You're in a class or you're in a session. You're like, well, what do you think your favorite animal is? My dog, my cat, right. Because you shouldn't have a leopard as a pet. You don't know how many times I've thought about opening, buying enough property to open an animal sanctuary just to house bears. Can't do it, never did it, am not gonna do it at 54. Um, and I know I only look 35. Thank you, thank you very much. So, um, but that doesn't stop me from obsessing about them and going to see every one of them that I possibly can. And there's a place in Arizona called Barizona that if I could live in their park, I would live in their park. Oh yes, it would just be me and the bears and nobody else, it, well, okay, people to help me clean the park and feed them, but um, I, it was the greatest day of my life when I got to spend a day at Arizona. It was just the greatest day of my life. So take some time, you know, and really consider and ask, you know, the animal kingdom, you know, it may turn out that a cat is, you know, is your totem, but I would bet you it's not. I would bet you that it's cat because you can have one as a pet, and that's probably what you're most familiar with, and you love them, love them, love them, and they're in your face 24 hours a day. Um, it might be a dog. I don't know, you know, but I would bet it's for the same reason that a cat is. I bet if you really, you know, stop and think about the animals that, that move you, in, in an unusual way, maybe a, a deeper kind of way, it might be a snow leopard. It might be, you know, and it, it might be a mythical animal, um, a mythical or fantasy animal. It might be an ancient animal that doesn't even live here anymore. I mean, it could be 
just about anything. So just keep your mind open to that, and it can really help you just get to know yourself better. And that can only affect every yourself and everybody and everything around you in a much more positive way. So let's move on to power animal because that's a touchy subject. Here's why. You know, we hear the stories, we read about the stories of the mom whose kid was trapped under a car and she lifted by herself, she lifted the Volkswagen off of her child. Okay. Did she stop to summon the power of an elephant first? No, she did not. But she was able to access that power inside of herself. And they can say it's about adrenaline and it's this and it's that. But when you start to exhibit quote unquote superhuman strength or superhuman abilities like psychic work, like shamanic journeying, that kind of thing. Please, animals do that stuff every day, please. We're an animal. We used to do that stuff every day. It's how we stayed alive, right, is to use our spidey senses. Um, it, it can get away from you pretty quickly. So let's say that you're a person that's always lived in fear and you're in an abusive relationship, and you don't want to live in fear anymore, and you decide to call forth the power of a tigress. Okay, what does that mean exactly? How much of that power, at what time, and in what way are you going to bring that forward? Because, you know, because I'd hate to see you jump somebody, you know, with all that rah inside of you and get hurt or not be able to control the rage or the anger or the things that can come tumbling out that, you know, when you least expect them and don't know how to work with them. So when I say to people, you know, let's work on power animals and let's call forth your power animal, the idea is to set a specific intention. Here is the animal energy I want to call forth, I want to invoke and channel, and here's why. And we do all of that kind of choice making before we ever go into a meditation or I might ask a student to say what they would like to say in a situation or to a person, but envision themselves as the canary before they say it, as the sea urchin or the starfish before they say it as the mastodon, <clears throat> pardon you guys, <clears throat> the mastodon of ancient times before they say it, or a pterodactyl, or a centaur, or Bigfoot, you know. Um, <laughs> you guys have seen the meme going around Facebook that, <laughs> that Bigfoot is the champ of social distancing? Best meme ever. Anyway, so, um, you know, and it's like, be like Bigfoot, right? So, um, before you run out willy-nilly and you ask yourself your muscle memory, your soul memory, your body memory, your DNA memory, <clears throat> all of that to bring forth, to invoke through you, to give you the, the power in that moment to align with, to meld with, the energy and medicine or power of whatever animal it is, you've got some choices to make. You don't want to scare yourself. You don't want to scare other people. And I'm not trying to plant a negative seed. I'm not. Believe me. You would never know this. Never. I actually told somebody this the other day, and here's what they said. I'm calling bullshit on that. There is no possible way. Nope. No way. You're making that up to illustrate a point. No, I'm not. When I was a kid, when I tell you painfully shy, head down, wouldn't talk to anybody except for adults. You bring me an adult, and I'll sit there and talk to them for hours. But I didn't have friends. I was a social outcast. Today I'm a social outcast for completely different reasons. But when I was a kid, my, in elementary school, my elementary school principal called my mom, not the counselor, the principal and said, we're really worried about your daughter because at that time, you know, this was the 70s, you guys, um, you know, studies have shown that really shy children grow up to be social outcasts and serial killers and, you know, whatever. And my mom was like, Wah! she was a single mom. She didn't know what to do. She freaked out. 
and forced me into situations where, you know, I had to talk to people and I had to be where people are and that kind of thing. Um, but if I had at that time known anything about invoking spirit or, excuse me, invoking power animals, I don't know what would have happened. I might have invoked an aggressive, you know, cat on the hunt because, you know, I'd had about enough. There was one girl in elementary school that just made my life a living hell. You know, in retrospect, she was one taco short of a combination plate. And I feel for what was the poor kid at, at the time. The adult in me just feels for her. I, I don't know what happened to her, but I, you know, I don't know how great it would have been given a lot of different circumstances. But, you know, this kid used to haul off and slap me across the face. It didn't matter how many times she got suspended. It didn't matter. Any, just She would just walk up in the hallway and go, whap! And I would just put my head down and I would walk away. Well, I don't even know what would have happened if I had invoked, known how to invoke, the power of whatever, you know. Let's say it was that jaguar or that lion or an eagle or, you know, some other animal that we really associate with power being an apex predator. Um, no good could have come of that. That could have gone very wrong on a lot of different levels. So be very judicious and conscious Make good choices, kitties, because while in some circumstances, just as a classroom exercise, man, it is just wondrous, just magical and wondrous to see someone break through um, from their shyness or their lack of self-confidence or the things that they've always wanted to say to somebody that maybe tough things to for that person to hear but that you know they probably should have been told those things a decade ago and maybe their abhorrent behavior um you know would have would have healed or gone by the wayside or whatever but you don't necessarily want people willy-nilly walking out in the world you know myself included <clears throat> and just invoking the power in medicine because when you're in a place where you're really ready to channel and you're ready to bring that pure medicine through from an animal, you're ready to truly find that place in yourself. And it can go the opposite way. I mean, you know, more often than not, I'm calling upon cricket or grasshopper, some praying mantis, some kind of animal that's like, sit still. I don't want to have to tell you again, this is not the right time. Uh, you know, that can go as south as quickly as an animal that is an apex predator <clears throat> and in their world you know grasshoppers and praying mantis and you know um crickets they're praying mantis in some part of their world or they're uh, an apex predator in their part of the world um but you can stay too quiet for too long or you can jump at the wrong time or you can be too soft um you know, I, I found that it only took me about a year <laughs> to get past my shyness and become the little bit of a terrifying version of bear and Scorpio that both animals can produce. It didn't take me long to tap into that. It took me much longer to opt out of that. <laughs> you know, there was no unsubscribe button. Um, and I didn't know that's what I was doing. I was just not being shy anymore okay, I was just not letting people use me as a doormat anymore. I was not, at the end of the day, I was not being fearful anymore. And I, you know, fear is just not part of my vocabulary. It's, I'm, it's just not, even when it should be. And there are times in my life where I have called on my power animal to help me accept, see and accept um, you know, it's okay to opt out of things, relationships and jobs and <clears throat> social situations that are not good for you, that could be dangerous for you. And that doesn't mean that you're walking away in fear. It means you're being wise. So it's taken me a long time to learn that, right? And so just know that when you call on your power animal, 
I'm not saying it can make you too strong or too weak, but you might be able to break through the ceiling, the, you know, just have a breakthrough of some kind, um, spiritual, emotional, mental, even physical. And I just want to say I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a medical professional of any kind. This is all metaphysical. It's all spiritual in nature. Be clear on that. Um, you never know when a breakthrough might cause you to stay in that place for a little too long. And so, you know, balance, 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 balance. What else do spiritual people shout from the rooftops? Balance, you got to have balance. It's all about the balance. When it comes to power animal work, it absolutely truly is. However, um, with, some, with some work, with some time, with some effort, man, it can be one of the greatest tools you ever have in your life and enable you to do things for yourself, your friends, your family, for the world, for animals that you may never have dreamed of, that you may never have thought possible. So um, I hope that helps with the Bernadette and spirit animal, well, animal ally difference between spirit power and totem animals. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'll say again. Depending on which culture you're talking to, getting their lessons from, getting their shamanic teachings from, reading their myths, you know, their oral, hearing their oral traditions from, they kind of all mean the same thing. So like if you take what a spirit animal does for you, the totem animal is who you are, here's why you would call on a power animal, um, and there are a variety of ways to do that. That's an entirely different video that, you know, will take a little bit of time. Um, a spirit animal or a totem animal or a power animal, depending on the culture, kind of mean all of those things all wrapped up in that animal. But for purposes of unconfusing myself as well as all you wild ones or anybody that's, you know, reading what I write or, you know, uh, listening to the videos and applying it um, in their own life, in their classes, in their readings, it's just a way of categorizing things that can make it a little bit simpler to get the right questions or the, the, the right answer to the right questions, if that makes sense, the more accurate answers to the questions, um, a little easier to interpret the messages when they do come to you, and a greater sense of control and a greater sense of self. And, you know, <clears throat> isn't that, you know, don't we all want a greater sense of self? You know, greater sense of control, that's debatable. Um, but greater sense of self, yeah, and confidence and just everything great that comes along with it, that's awesome. So, again, um, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope that you're, you're running wild and free and your life is everything you want it to be. If not, guess who you can call? You can call on your spirit, totem, and power animals. And one more plug for my deck. Ta-da! So the Arc Animal, Oracle, and Tarot deck is um, the most comprehensive body of work out there, period, whether books or cards, about spirit, totem, and power animals. There are 100 cards in the main deck and 49 more cards available in the expansion packs. The guidebook is a 300... Do I have one sitting right here by me? Yes, I do. Hold on one second. I will show you. Um, <clears throat> this book is not one of the little pamphlets, you know, that you get in most decks. This is a for real book, y'all. Like, here's my hand. Here's how big it is. It's a full color um, raccoon. Oh, page of wands. Ah, you guys got to look that up. So um, it's got 149 animal meanings in it. And for those that are the actual tarot cards, it's got the tarot interpretation, um, how the animal aligns with that tarot interpretation. It also has the oracle uh meaning and the spirit totem and power animal meaning and the book is like 370 i don't know it's big anyway the bottom line is oh in the cards let me just say this so people ask me a lot if the um are there a lot of animals that repeat themselves no only one animal repeats itself an owl is the moon card in the tarot deck and um and a set of owls is in the friends, family, and lovers expansion pack. They're so beautiful. It's the most beautiful picture ever. But other than that, so essentially you have 148 different animals and only two that have the same animal and they're used for completely different purposes. They're completely different owls anyway. So um, all of that being said, if you really are 
I, I kind of, I don't really necessarily like to use the words, you know, if you're taking this seriously, but truly if you're committed to learning and growing within the, the world of spirit, totem, power animals, you know, other than yourself, there really isn't a more comprehensive um, tool, spiritual tool that you can get on the market just if for no other reason than the sheer volume and in, of in-depth information really heavily researched, you know, definitely from my 30 years of experience and, you know, reading books like this crazy, and I have knocked my microphone 60 ways to Sunday, you know, these kind of giant books when I can find them, um, it's, it's probably the best way. Mm, it, it, it's the most in-depth and comprehensive way. Let me not say that <clears throat> my materials are better than anybody else's because they're not. I have all, you know, the, the few animal decks that are out on the market because comparatively speaking, there aren't a lot. I look at them all the time. I, just because I have my own deck doesn't mean that I don't refer to other people's books and decks whom I tremendously, tremendously admire um, and need to be reminded of their voice and their way of explaining things. So mine is another tool, but it is, like I said, it is comprehensive and it is in depth. And I hope that you'll consider getting it um, as you continue your work um, with the spirit, totem, and power animal world. So. Again, stay wild. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.